Hello, people. I'm Ginny Metherill, and I'm a fourth generation witch. We're back with my ever popular almanac series, looking at all the witchcraft that you can do throughout my favourite month of the year, that is June. Ever with these videos, what I like to do is to give you a general overview of the witchcraft trends that run throughout the month of June itself, and then we'll go into the nitty gritty day to day detail of what witchcraft you can do when and why. So, with that said, let's look at our general overview. June is my favourite month. If I haven't said that before, June is my favourite month. It is known as the month of roses and so I have some beautiful roses here because of course the world is in bloom. It is a cracking month all round, isn't it? The sun is the master of the sky in June and actually as a result you should bear in mind that old adage and this does work as a general rule of thumb wherever you are in the world. If your shadow is shorter than your height you need to be in the shade or have full protection, 50 UV sun cream, whatever. And if your shadow is longer than your height, then you can sit in the sunshine without fear of burning. It is a very rule of thumb, that one. So don't, you know, blame me if you go and sit in the sun for hours and hours and hours and then get burnt. For goodness sake, wear sunscreen. As I've said, June is the month of roses, that huge symbol which is taken by many religions the world over. I think the Christians use the rose to symbolise their goddess, the Virgin Mary. Politically, the Labour Party, certainly in the UK, use the rose as their symbol of socialism. And tarot cards use roses as symbols of balance when you find them in a spread. What I particularly like about them is that I have a huge interest in them. They speak to my personal energy and therefore I get a greater advantage from roses than a person who is fairly indifferent to them. They would have a better healing energy to me and roses certainly have a really good purity energy. So they will cleanse me better. A rose petal laden bath, for example, will give me a greater benefit than somebody else who has, say, an affinity with lavender. I love roses. They are beautiful. They smell divine and they are symbols of summer. June is also the month of bees, those beautiful creatures that have been worshipped throughout our history. It is a time when bees swarm, and I never actually knew this, but apparently it's the old queen that takes her loyal supporters out with her when she finds that the colony that she has founded is a bit busy. They swarm out and create a new hive somewhere, wherever it's appropriate. She will then die and new queens are produced. However, in her original hive, the new queens that have been bred are now fighting it out with each other and the best queen wins and she takes her maiden virginal flight with her drones so that she can mate and come back to the hive and lay her eggs for the new colony. It's rather sweet, actually. I like the fact that the old queen goes, well, I've had enough of this place. I want to move out. It's too busy in here, which I suspect is exactly how it goes. June itself is named after the goddess, the Roman goddess Juno. She was the queen of the gods and she was the patroness of women. She presided over marriage, childbirth, as well as had major affiliations with the moon. You should get married in June. It's considered a great month to get married of, presided over by the Queen of the Gods and the Queen of Women. So a lovely hand fasting or even a simple jumping the broom ceremony is great. June is finally the month that the fairies are pretty active within this world. Now, during the month of May, of course, they had their fairy revels, but they're coming to a fruition almost with the advent of midsummer. And this is when you will often see the fairies dance. Our ancestors believed that when Christianity came to the British Isles, the fairies took control of the oak trees, and that's where they hid from us mere mortals. And oak trees really do come to the absolute beauty in midsummer. 
they were sacred trees, not only of the Druids, but our Neolithic ancestors, our medieval ancestors. They were worshipped by the Tudors, for example, who considered oak trees to be the venerable and the greatest of all the British trees. They were planted by the thousands by the Tudors because they wanted to have those oak woods which are so glorious. Oak trees are considered as portals to the other world, which is why you might have seen fairies going into them or coming out of them or dancing round them. Now is the time to go and have a look. I've never seen that. Looking forward to it, maybe one day. Midsummer is also the time when we worship the Oak King being at his prime, although he's defeated by the Holly King, because of course Midsummer is when the earth turns its face to the darker half of the year. Before this happens, we are here to celebrate this time of year. Gosh, it's just the most gorgeous. I mean, you can't really beat the UK in June, in my opinion. I'd never go abroad at this time of year. It's too special a time to waste on France or Europe. I have to be in the UK. So for June, gather ye rosebuds while you may. Enjoy the greatness of this time of year and the wonderful energy that is just blossoming and blooming throughout the world. And with that said, now let's look at the nitty gritty day to day detail for what witchcraft you can do and when. And we're going to start with not the 1st of June because I can't really find anything to do on the 1st of June, which is unusual. So I'm going to have to go straight on to the 2nd. The 2nd of June is the day that commemorates St Elmo's fire. Now this is a weather phenomenon. It was ball lightning or fire lightning or St Elmo's fire. It's basically plasma and a corona. Very scientific, don't really understand it. But it is created around tall structures such as mastheads and chimneys. This was considered a great boon at the time and it was very lucky. It wasn't like marsh fire which was considered unlucky. So go sailing with a tall masted ship and you might be lucky enough to look at it. The 3rd of June is quite exciting because it's when we have something called a parade of planets. This is not especially rare, but it is when six of the major planets are in the sky at the same time. These are Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. This is a large planetary alignment, but it also repeats itself on August the 28th. Planetary activity often comes in twos and threes, but the significance of this one, astrologers tend to believe, will affect four zodiac signs for the good. Taurus will be given greater communication and growth. Aries will receive energy and motivation. Pisces gets greater and heightened clarity and intuition, as if Pisces isn't intuitive enough, but you get some more, so, you know, use it. And finally, Aquarius receives the knowledge of their life lessons and the understanding of their responsibilities. As I have said, it is not particularly rare, this phenomenon. They're not actually all in a line. It's just that they're all in the sky at the same time. And in the UK, you should be able to look at this at a best time of 4.47 a.m. or just before dawn. And in fact, wherever you are in the northern hemisphere, just before dawn is the perfect time to view this. The 6th of June is the night of the new moon. This new moon is in Gemini. Now, astrologers believe that new moons are the best times to make plans and focus on your dreams. And each new moon has a special energy to it, depending on what zodiacal sign they're in. With this moon being in Gemini, it means that you should focus on your communication strategies. This could be socialising, parties or moving forward in relationships because you will have a great strength and ability to get your ideas and creativity across to anybody who will listen. So it's a great time to focus on that creative side and communication side of your nature. Of course, the 6th of June is a weather divination day. There's many of them throughout the year. But because it's a new moon, you can look at the new moon. And if you see any of the horns of the new moon discoloured by clouds or a blackness to her middle or wavy mists obscuring her glory, then it means it's going to be wet for the next month. Uh, I hope not. The 
The 6th of June is also the start of Appleby Horse Fair. This is the largest gypsy traditional fair in Europe. Now, before you all come for me in the comments, where I'm from and m most of the southwest of the UK do not consider gypsy a slur, we know a lot of gypsies, although they're a closed nation, we, I do have interactions with gypsies on a fairly regular basis and they are proud to call themselves gypsies. In this country, at least, there are plenty of words that are a racial slur against gypsies, but that is not one of them, the Romany gypsy heritage. So this is Appleby Horse Fair. There's plenty of the traditional gypsy crafts involved in this fair, such as divination, fortune telling, great artistry, crystal balls, and of course, the horses. One of the great parts of it is when the horses are washed in the sands and then they are flashed, which is raced up and down flashing lane. It is quite a closed fair, so it's not a tourist attraction. However, I do think it is worth a look. The 9th of June is St Columb's Day. Now, I'm mentioning this here because this is apparently the luckiest day of the year. So if you feel like a little flutter on the horses or a flutter on the lottery, you might win your millions. Probably not, but you can have a go. However, if you should be out and about on this day, you will find it especially lucky if you come across some St John's wort, which is this yellow flower of midsummer, known previously to its current name of St John's wort as Chase Devil, because it keeps the devil away. Take this flower and if you pack it into a small pouch and put it underneath your armpit, it will protect you from death. So, don't want to die on this day. Find some St John's wort and you just won't. The 13th of June is St Anthony's Day. St Anthony is the Christian patron saint of lost items. So it is today that you will find any lost items that have been missing for several years if you raise your prayers to St Anthony, apparently. However, there is an old charm superstition that on this day, if you take a key and you tie it with the length of your hair, so take some hair and thread it through the key, and then hold it over a sacred book. Uh, this could be a Bible, a Quran, a grimoire, a book of shadows. You will be able to discover who the thief is of any items that you have had stolen. You can hold the key over and you say the name of the suspect and the key will start to waggle when you reach the right name. The 14th of June is the perfect day to raid a squirrel's nest and capture a baby squirrel because it will make the most charming pet for you today. It is also the day when Herb Robert is blooming. Now you should be aware of this particular weed as it is. This is Robin Goodfellas Herb. He adores it above all others, and should you cut his herb, you are likely to court mischief from him. And those of you who do not know who Robin Goodfellow is, you might know him by his other great name, which is Pup. The 20th of June is Litha. That is Midsummer, the great pagan festival. Now, I'm not going to tell you very much about Litha here. Of course, such a wonderful festival is going to have its own dedicated video. So watch out for that in the coming weeks. However, I will put up last year's video on screen for you now to watch. I will say one thing. This is one of the times when the veil between the worlds is at its thinnest and the spirits will walk. So Litha is all about divination, the Fae, because, you know, this is their time too. They like to celebrate this and lighting a bonfire, but to celebrate the sun at its peak. However, one of the sweetest things to do is to ensure that your household fae are made to feel welcome. So clean out any hearth that you may have and place beside it a pair of shoes and a small bowl of bread and milk. And this you will find devoured in the morning, if only energetically. And inside the shoe, you might find a gift. Let me know if you do this and what happens. I would love to hear. The 22nd of June is the night of the full moon. And this full moon is in Capricorn and it achieves its greatest power at 2.07 a.m. So. Capricorn moons, which is me, I'm Capricorn. So this is my moon. Each moon takes on the power of the sign that they are in, as we have seen with the new moon. And this moon 
will have great strength of character involved in it. It is a powerful portal of self-discovery and we shall have clarity of action and the solstice fire in our belly from this moon. This moon is known as the strawberry moon, the mead moon and the rose moon, all of which are of course terribly prevalent at this time of year, aren't they? Me and the community that I grew up in it personally knew this as the rose moon because of course June is the month of roses. Ah, back to roses. I do love them. They're so healing and pleasurable for me. So the solstice until the end of June or the 29th of June to be exact is when the fairies are at their most active. Now, it is during this time that the Fae have come out to dance and celebrate the midsummer and then they, you know, go off visiting or whatever they do. They are generally in this world. And so you can capture a fairy and bind it to your will at this time. However, I can't recommend this as because when you have unbound them, the repercussions would be dreadful. You've no idea what they can do to you. I think on my Instagram I talk about a spell to capture and bind a fairy and it's it's quite difficult but I'm pretty sure it might actually work but I don't recommend it because you never know. You should not enslave another being after all. And if you want more information and more content around these sorts of subjects do go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill and there's plenty there for you to have a look at. So I hope you enjoyed this My Almanac of June. If you did, please give me a like and a subscribe because it really helps my channel. Otherwise, I will see you in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm.